Due to the highly sensitive nature of the program you are about to see, it was necessary to change the physical appearance and names of some of the participants. Discover what the KGB found in an Egyptian tomb. The objective of this particular mission was to find the knowledge, knowledge which was left behind from an advanced culture. I was one of the first to be recruited by the KGB. I don't believe the soldiers realized the significance of what they were looking at. Got orders, you have to do it. The first hard evidence of a humanoid extraterrestrial life form. Extraterrestrial contact at a distant time in an ancient land. Remember, nobody knows my name. Exclusive film footage of what could be the discovery of the millennium. Learn the terrible secret oh, Papa. before it's too late. Hello, I'm Roger Moore. In 1961, Soviet cosmonaut Andrei Andropov lifted off in a Soyuz space capsule and spent 45 minutes in orbit. For decades, we have believed that the first human beings in space were Russian. Is it possible, though, that centuries earlier, the first people to leave the Earth were ancient Egyptians? And did Soviet researchers learn this early in the 1960s? Recent evidence out of the former USSR indicates that indeed Russian agents were very curious about artifacts uncovered in Egypt. Artifacts which they believe suggest early contact between humans and beings not from this planet. It's always been assumed the hunting ground for extraterrestrial life is above our planet. You watch the skies for UFOs. You probe the domain of deep space for the telltale signals of ET. Who would have thought to look underground for aliens? No one except the KGB. Dr. Viktor Ivanovich holds degrees in astrophysics and neurology. While serving in the Kremlin as science advisor on advanced propulsion systems, Dr. Ivanovich contends he gained access to the files of a KGB mission called Project ISIS. Project ISIS, it was targeted at uh, discovering Egyptian artifacts and knowledge that may have uh, military applications. ISIS was one of the several covert research missions that KGB was conducting during that time. Dr. Ivanovich chronicles the mission and its shocking discovery in his book, Project ISIS, the KGB's discovery of the Tomb of the Visitor. This exclusive footage has never before been seen outside the top secret facilities of the KGB. According to Ivanovich, what you are watching is a visual record of the most important discovery in the history of mankind. There is no disputing the fact that uh, a small group of uh, Russian scientists, together with uh, military experts on radioactivity and chemical warfare, discovered the tomb in Egypt in uh, 1961. The record is clear on that point. But what was never disclosed was what they found inside the tomb. From the available evidence and highly placed sources, in the sarcophagus were the remains of an alien creature who died in Egypt about 10,000 years BC. The uh, point I'm making in my book is that the presence of this creature and the design of the pyramids and the whole pool of historical and uh, uh, scientific evidence shows 
that this uh, particular visitation took place about 11,000 years BC. Long before the Babylonians or the Greeks, before the gods of the Assyrians or those of Crete, long before all others, there was Egypt. The world owes much to the ancient Egyptians. They were the first mathematicians, the first astronomers. They gave the world the principles of geometry, the use of symbols to convey numbers. The first calendar was Egyptian, as was the first writing paper. The world's first libraries were found buried under the sands of Egypt. This is why the disclosure of Project Isis is so troubling. If the claims of Dr. Ivanovich are true, if the KGB did find an alien entombed in Egypt, it will force us to reconsider the history of civilization. Each year, hundreds of archaeological expeditions come to Egypt. They could be analyzing antiquities that have long been studied, searching for new clues that may disprove old theories, or struggling to reconstruct the life of a slave village from fragments of the past. We are currently excavating a site in what is known as the New Kingdom, on the slave route to the Valley of the Kings. And the question there is how did the ancient Egyptians feed and care for the hundreds, perhaps thousands, of slaves that they needed to create these massive, massive structures? The fundamental question of ancient Egypt is how did such a civilization, so incredibly advanced, spring forth, fully formed, around 2500 BC? If you look back, at any other ancient civilization, what you find is a gradual historical development, meaning they learned about trade, they created economies, they became technologically advanced slowly, hundreds and hundreds, perhaps thousands of years. You get none of that with ancient Egypt. 2500 BC, boom. Fully formed society pops out of the desert. It's like a Model T Ford, an ancient automobile, one minute, and the next minute, the craft is a space shuttle. The question, the fundamental question here, is that there seems to be no gradual historical development to explain the building of ancient Egypt. It seems to have formed from a legacy. Some have speculated that Egypt was built from the remnants of a lost civilization that perished in the biblical flood. Dr. Ivanovich contends Project Isis discredited this theory. According to Ivanovich, the KGB uncovered evidence that proves Egypt was founded on a heritage of wisdom from an extraterrestrial race. We are still building behind me, once housed what was undoubtedly the world's largest and most feared intelligence agency. Why would the KGB be so interested in what many consider to be science fiction? The genesis of Project Isis began in the post-war period of the 50s. From the bloody ashes of World War II, a new Soviet state had emerged. No longer was Russia a backward agrarian nation. The motherland was a superpower and willing to prove it. Under the dictatorship of Nikita Khrushchev, the Soviets were determined to show the democracies of the West that communism was superior. It was a challenge America could not ignore. The competition between um, the two superpowers was an immense drain on Soviet economy. Placing the man in space before the Americans was a great propaganda feat but it cost billions in dollars. The same for the arms buildup. Each time America tested the nuclear bomb, Russia had to respond with a bigger one, again costing the Soviet government billions. As the world watched and prayed, 
the two nations joined in a cold war for technological supremacy. Khrushchev knew that the so-called socialist camp headed by the Soviet Union could not keep up this pace. It did not have NATO's resources. That's when the KGB was ordered to investigate less uh, costly means of uh, technical advancement. At the height of the Cold War, the KGB was the largest secret police and espionage force on the planet, with more than 300,000 agents. Under orders from the Kremlin, the KGB focused its considerable resources on areas that some would call fringe science. The KGB investigated the power of psychics. Experiments were conducted to test the feasibility of gathering intelligence through mind control. A man with a taste for blood headed the paranormal division of the KGB. The KGB research into the anomalous phenomena had begun in 1920s when a special laboratory so-called dark room was created. From the middle 1930s, Russian uh, psychics had been persecuted under Stalinist regime. Gleb Boki, who was in charge of the paranormal phenomena for the KGB, was a sinister and cruel person who was known to drink human blood. The KGB had conducted um, psychotronic weapons research on uh, prisoners that were sentenced to die and uh, also political dissidents. When Gleb Boki and people who had studied the uh, anomalous phenomena with him in the KGB were executed in 1937, all of the files were transferred, as far as we know, to the most secret archives of the KGB. However, the paranormal research went on. Under Khrushchev, great successes had been achieved in the Soviet Union with the paranormal. Some of the first biogenerators and machines to alter human minds came to the scene. The Americans were worried about Soviet research programs because they knew that the Soviet Union would not use it for peaceful means, that the Soviet Union was there to conquer and to uh, overtake the United States. Another area of deep interest was UFOs. The Kremlin hoped investigating reports of alien spacecraft could advance aeronautical design. The former Soviet Union was an ideal location for the study of unidentified flying objects. Russia had more UFO sightings than any other nation. One reason for the multitude of UFO cases is that Russian borders surrounded the largest landmass in the world. Of the reported UFO sightings, the most compelling case is known as the Dalnogorsk Incident. It's uh, the best documented crash uh, because we do have the fragments. Uh, they have been analyzed. It was a small probe. It was not kind of a big object, but something crashed on a hill in Dalnegorsk in, in January of 1986. From analysis of the crash site, this computer simulation illustrates the last moments of the doomed spacecraft. If we play the tape in slow motion, we can observe why the saucer-shaped design is so prevalent in UFO reports. Leading experts say a fixed-wing aircraft operating under the same adverse conditions would have buried its nose in the ground and burst into flames. As one can see, the saucer shape enables the space vehicle to skip and cartwheel over the field. The spacecraft was damaged, but not destroyed. From contacts with the Russian Mafia, 
the producers obtained this exclusive secret KGB footage. The film purportedly shows military personnel and KGB agents at the crash site of a saucer-shaped object. Leading the mission is the man wearing the fur hat. He is believed to be a senior KGB agent. It's still not certain if the Dalnogorsk incident was the crash of a UFO. But some think the KGB's mission to find and adapt alien technology to Soviet aircraft was successful. UFOs, the paranormal and the Project ISIS, all three were part of the Kremlin strategy of uh, achieving military superiority. According to Ivanovich, the goal of Project ISIS was to find a collection of advanced knowledge left by a lost civilization. Knowledge that would give the Soviet Union an invincible lead in their quest for global domination. One of the enduring legends of Egypt is that somewhere, perhaps inside the Great Pyramid or in a lost tomb, somewhere in Egypt is a chamber of knowledge containing the wisdom of gods who came from the stars. Since 820 AD, explorers have dreamed of finding the mythical chamber of knowledge. Sheikh Abdullah Amamun was the first to breach the massive stone of the Great Pyramid. The Sheikh was drawn by the legend that, concealed in the pyramid, was a record of the past and future of mankind. With tales of golden treasure, the Sheikh coaxed his terrified men through the passageways. Arab explorers reached the king's chamber, they found only an empty sarcophagus. Some believe if there is a chamber of ancient wisdom, it will be found under the Great Pyramid. For years there has been speculation about subterranean passageways running from the pyramid to the Sphinx. Recent seismic surveys suggest a mysterious chamber-like cavern lies below the Sphinx. This has led many to reconsider the legend of the Chamber of Knowledge. Is there a storehouse of knowledge left behind by ancient visitors? Signs point to yes. The vastness of the desert here is overwhelming. It was in this region, at the edge of civilization, that something profound may have happened over 2,000 years ago. Egypt was the first civilization. Pharaohs ruled the kingdom for over a thousand years. Who were these mysterious people? From where did they derive their power and wealth? Where did they find their wisdom? The objective of this uh, particular mission was to find the knowledge, knowledge which was left behind from an advanced culture, which predated this traditional Egyptian history. The team of archaeologists was uh, composed of uh, Egyptologists from uh, Russian Soviet Academy of Science, which was one of the best schools of ancient uh, cultures in the whole world. And in spite of that, the uh, KGB leaders uh, gave the project little chance for success. I was one of the first to be recruited by the KGB. I don't know what was the interest in it. But anyway, you, can, you cannot say no to Комитет Государственной Безопасности, KGB. You got orders, you have to do it. So my recommendation was to start right there, at the Giza Plateau. A trip to Egypt is a humbling experience. 
the ancient monuments still cast their long shadow upon the works of man. The Giza complex includes the Great Pyramid of Khafu. Nearby is the Pyramid of Menkare. Still visible are some of the mortuary temples. Next in size to the Great Pyramid is the Pyramid of the Pharaoh Khafre. Many believe it was Khafre who ordered the creation of the Sphinx. Carved out of the bedrock, the colossal statue appears to be guarding secrets that lie beneath the sands. It took centuries to complete the complex of monuments on the Giza Plateau. It must have been an awesome vision. Towering pyramids, gigantic statues, temples, crypts, and causeways. Giza was a manifestation of the power of Egypt and the divinity of a living god called the Pharaoh. No monument symbolized the godlike power of the Pharaoh better than the Pyramid of Khafu. For size and engineering precision, the Great Pyramid has never been equaled. The pyramid weighs roughly six million tons. 20 times the weight of the Empire State Building. Until the Eiffel Tower was erected, the Great Pyramid was the tallest structure in the world. Over two million stones were used in its construction. No stone weighs less than a ton, and some as much as 30 tons. Inside, passageways connect the chambers. Shafts run to the exterior. Today, the pyramid is rough stone, but it once had a mirror-like finish of masonry. It is believed the Great Pyramid was adorned with a top of solid gold. The sunlight dazzled the eye for hundreds of miles. For centuries, experts have speculated on the purpose of the pyramids. Conventional theory claims the pyramids were symbolic doorways to the afterlife. Others believe the pyramid was an astronomical observatory some say a geographical survey instrument. One outlandish theory states the Great Pyramid was a grain elevator. But experts do agree the pyramids were far more than just gigantic tombs. Nobody's ever found evidence of a burial in a pyramid, and we still don't know how they were built. Scholars had argued that the technology to construct massive pyramids might not have been available to people at the point in human history when these structures were built. The pyramid builders knew information that would not be rediscovered for centuries. For example, the pyramid's height corresponds to the distance from the Earth to the Sun. The pyramid was set within four degrees of the corners of the compass, a precision that has never been equaled. And amazingly, the Great Pyramid lies in the exact center of the Earth's landmass. When I began my field research at Giza, I was immediately struck by the fact that whoever built the pyramids could determine longitude and latitude. This is amazing, since the technology to fix longitude was not invented until the 1600s. But more to the point, the pyramids were constructed at the exact center of the Earth. Also, the size, the pyramids are visible from an extremely high altitude. They can be seen from the moon. Plus, the pyramid is one of the best shapes for radar reflection. For these reasons, I advise the KGB, the pyramids of Egypt, were built for navigation by alien explorers. It makes perfect sense. Egypt would be an obvious choice for, for the aliens who had to establish an outpost for planetary expeditions. The initial landing by an alien expedition team would pick a flat area with a few obstacles Egypt would be an obvious choice. 
since it's also in the center of the land, the habitable mass of the earth. Though never adopting communism as its core political system, Egypt was for many years still firmly within the Soviet sphere of influence, a client nation. Egypt both benefited from and made concessions to its benefactor, the former USSR. Some experts speculate the Kremlin feared the CIA would learn about the mission to Egypt. Pressed by U.S. competition in the arms and space race, Russia did not want to start a tomb race. The geopolitics of the time enabled Project ISIS to operate with complete secrecy. By the late 50s, Egypt accounted for 43% of all Soviet aid to third world nations. When Project ISIS was initiated, Soviet military personnel in Egypt numbered over 20,000. The heavy military presence disguised the efforts of mission scientists. According to Ivanovich, project scientists were headquartered in Cairo. From there, small squads of archaeologists would conduct covert studies of the Giza pyramids. Often, the scientists would be disguised as Arab peasants or army officers. For some strange reason, we were sent there uh, in soldiers' uniform with Kalashnikov assault rifles, like we were a bunch of soldiers or something, when in fact we were just archaeologists. And if it were just, uh, they would just tell everybody that there's a, uh, a group of archaeologists looking for some artifacts that would be accepted by everyone. Project ISIS did not rely solely on undercover archaeologists. In 1959, the KGB recruited an official within the Nasser government, Sami Shadriff, the director of the President's Office of Information. Because of his position, he had the carte blanche to highly classified information. Sharaf was also an expert in wiretapping of uh, Egyptian officials. Many times, the information Shadref gathered seemed of little consequence. However, according to Ivanovich, on the night of July 24, 1960, a conversation was recorded that would spin Project ISIS into the realm of myth and disbelief. This recording was obtained uh, through the sources who I must protect. ايوه يمكن تعمل عليهم هم كانوا يشربوا خمرة لا هم مسلمين متشددين قالوا انهم وجدوا مقبره مقفوله ايوه دي معوي قالوا هو قبر كيف عرفوا اشياء زي كده دخلوا شافوا على الحيطان رموز وكتابات وصور حكاوا عليهم من قبل تعرف ايش يعني هذا وجدوا مقبره الزوار مقبره الازهر مقبره الازهر one of the top officials, monitored by Sharaf, had phoned his brother. Apparently, two Bedouins stumbled upon the hidden tomb. So uh, they remained delirious for a few days, and finally they brought a local hospital. And uh, they repeated only this word, Magbarat and so on, which means the tomb of the visitor. A grave of the ancient Egyptian god who does not exist in Egyptian pantheon. He is not included as a god. He has a special sign as a visitor god. Long before the time of the pharaohs, there was a god who came from the skies with the others of his kind. They brought magic to the land, wonders, power, and wisdom. They returned to their home in the stars, but one stayed behind and taught the people of Nile all he knew. He was buried in the secret place it is called Ma Baratul Zuwar, the tomb of the visitors. Can myth conceal the truth? Could a legend be based on fact? 
You must embrace the myth, the folklore, the legend, because it's like a pearl inside of an oyster. You start with that tiny sand of truth, and then over the year, it gains luster and becomes legend. The producers of this program were skeptical. The possibility that KGB thought and mythology could lead to advanced alien knowledge was hard to accept. To obtain independent verification of Project ISIS, the producers tracked down a former diplomatic courier for the Soviet Union. The man now works for the Russian Mafia. I worked uh, as a messenger uh, for diplomatic corps. Uh, one of my roads was uh, moving documents between Cairo and Moscow. Uh, some of them was from uh, Mr. Shara. Uh, he was a director of information center, Egyptian information center at that time. It was in uh, the 60s, something like that. Uh, most of that papers weren't interested. And uh, some of them in code I couldn't even understand. But few of them I understood. And uh, hmm, how could I say in English? Uh, it seemed taught to me. And I decided to make a copy. Can we see uh, those copies? No. The man wanted money for the documents. Where are you taking me? Uh, don't worry. Our field producer explained he wouldn't pay unless he was certain the documents were from Project ISIS. The producer was taken to an abandoned office building on the outskirts of Moscow. This footage is from a hidden camera. All my paper in here. That's like a life insurance. A lot of people would pay a lot of money for this stuff. Is that what you used uh, as a courier? Yeah. You know, I think. Among the documents was a memo to a high ranking KGB official. It read My agents have secured the notes of one of the scientists working on the Tomb of the Visitor findings. Another was an inventory of contents taken from the tomb. Classified top secret, it read, Location of finding, undisclosed. Subjects, 15 crates of relics, one partially mummified body, one stone sarcophagus, and eight hieroglyphic samples. A project scientist who was one of the first to enter the tomb filed this report. It read, During inspection of the wall segment, we noted an odd sensation. A magnetic repulsive force seemed to be emanating from the rock. We were unable to find any scientific explanation. This memo is from the cryptologist report. Findings. Partial decoded message on tomb wall indicates a prophecy of the return of ancient wing gods. Gosh. Talks about the tomb, doesn't it? Yes. Okay, I think we got a deal. The documents made it clear. The Kremlin was taking the myth very seriously. One report indicated a military unit was ordered to the site. A security order of the highest level was in force when the sarcophagus was open. In Egypt, the focus of attention for most visitors is the awe-inspiring antiquities, ancient wonders from the past. Is it possible these attractions have been a draw for life forms other than human tourists? Not according to Dr. Ivanovich. His book makes it clear. Aliens didn't come to Egypt to see the pyramids. They came to build them. To summarize, the main point I'm making in this book is uh, that we deal with the unprecedented discovery in the history of mankind. It's the first 
discovery of the remains of a humanoid extraterrestrial alien, which was uh, what the Earth 10,000 years BC. The principal evidence in support of his theory is the film. Ivanovich claims the footage came from the maximum security archives of the KGB. The author accepted the producer's request for an independent analysis of the footage. We asked Russian film expert Sergei Goncharov for his opinion. He first examined the film cans. And uh, this is the name of the factory uh, that manufactures the motion picture film in the city of Petroslavl. This is the type of film type A2, which is the emulsion. Goncharov then analyzed the film emulsion for signs of fraud. Now that we've looked at the cans, the next thing to do was to actually find out if, if the film itself had any markings on it. Okay, in the very beginning of the film, we have this word, which in Russian says machala, or the beginning, or the start. Okay, then we have the two bits of information, which says plionka number 267. Plionka in Russian means emulsion or film, could denote the reel, the roll, or a batch, and this, of course, is the number. The next thing we see is this bit of information. Совершенно секретно, top secret archive of the KGB logo and the word archive of the KGB. The KGB has a history of sophisticated counterintelligence. Could Project ISIS and the discovery of the tomb be a skillful fabrication by the KGB? But why would the Soviets want to perpetrate a hoax of this magnitude? Perhaps as a diversionary tactic, masking the real KGB mission to Egypt? Whatever the truth, whether real or fake, we have learned that in investigating the KGB, it's best to keep an open mind to any possibility. This is the period where military, after first uh, safety precautions have been taken, entered without wearing gas masks, uh, but that's what they do now was uh, absolutely mistaken, and you will see why. Because they had to open sarcophagus after uh, proper examination of the, of the content. And you see uh, the fumes that turned out to be toxic come out. These are the remains, actually, of the, this uh, extraterrestrial alien. So, and uh, the fumes which are coming out, we'll see it later, uh, intoxicate one of the, of the soldiers. And the uh, such a circumstances uh, under this particular condition, they could be very poisonous. And uh, that's why they uh, invited the team of uh, this uh, chemical warfare specialist to uh, check the contaminated area again and uh, assist this uh, soldier who lost his senses. The energy inside the rock cave, particularly uh, during the first days of exploration, was very, very high. Uh, here we have uh, uh, the last period of uh, evacuation of the most important samples of archaeological excavation in the tomb. So we have two Bedouins here, just uh, they were invited as helps by absolutely neutral people. These are the most important uh, pieces of evidence that were uh, 
taken from the tomb after being inspected by uh, the team of the scientists. The producers obtained documents reporting on the scientific investigations of Project ISIS. Scientists who conducted the studies confirmed the authenticity of the reports. I got a call to report to the lab immediately. There was an archaeological discovery and we were to test the artifacts. And we were told that the item came from an Egyptian tomb of an undisclosed location. And we were not to discuss our findings with anyone. It was highly classified. Project ISIS now operated on two fronts. In Moscow, the artifacts from the tomb and the mummy were analyzed. At the Giza site, investigators continued to search for evidence of alien knowledge. Dr. Viktor Ivanovich holds degrees in astrophysics and neurology. While serving in the Kremlin as science advisor on advanced propulsion systems, Dr. Ivanovich contends he gained access to the files of a KGB mission called Project ISIS. Project ISIS, it was targeted at uh, discovering Egyptian artifacts and knowledge that may have uh, military applications. Dr. Ivanovich chronicles the mission and its shocking discovery in his book, Project ISIS, the KGB's discovery of the tomb of the visitor. This exclusive footage has never before been seen outside the top secret facilities of the KGB. According to Ivanovich, what you are watching is a visual record of the most important discovery in the history of mankind. There is no disputing the fact that uh, a small group of uh, Russian scientists together with uh, military experts on radioactivity and chemical warfare discovered the tomb in Egypt in uh, 1961. The record is clear on that point. But what was never disclosed was what they found inside the tomb. From the available evidence and highly placed sources in the sarcophagus were the remains of an alien creature who died in Egypt about 10,000 years BC. The uh, point I'm making in my book is that the presence of this creature and the design of the pyramids and the whole pool of historical and uh, uh, scientific evidence shows that this uh, particular visitation took place about 11,000 years BC. According to KGB documents, mission scientists began to wonder if the entire Giza Plateau was designed and engineered for a single purpose. This theory has found support in later research. I believe, and um, there are different schools of thought, but I believe that the pyramids were, or certainly the Great Pyramid, was a machine. It had some sort of purpose. Um, the measurements are extremely precise. Um, for, for example, the ratio between the height of the pyramid and the perimeter of the pyramid is the same as the ratio between the uh, radius of the Earth and the circumference of the Earth. So you can actually see the pyramid as sort of like a three-dimensional triangular depiction of a hemisphere, um, which might suggest that there was some reason to have the pyramid resonate with the planet. Now, I can convince, I think, even the greatest skeptic in 30 seconds that pyramids have powers to alter cosmic rays. Now, that sounds like some spacey thing, but here's the deal, a prism. Archaeoastronomer Yuri Vladmir agrees with the prism hypothesis. The pyramids are, in effect, huge prisms capable of concentrating energy. Capturing the light from the stars would initiate a process that would turn the Great Pyramid into an interstellar transmitter. Project scientists claim the three pyramids and Sphinx could be integral parts of an immense machine designed by alien engineers. According to them, all the monuments of Giza are linked by a master control mechanism inside the Great Pyramid. In the Great Pyramid, 
a passageway leads to the king's chamber. Above the sarcophagus is a tunnel some call the star shaft. When a specific celestial alignment occurs, starlight streaks down the shaft. The investigators theorize that radiant energy striking the sarcophagus could initiate something similar to a cold fusion reaction. Project researchers believe the prism structure of the pyramid would magnify and transfer the energy to the other monuments. In ways not fully understood by the team, a unified beam of energy could erupt, turning the Great Pyramid into a cosmic beacon used by alien starships for celestial navigation. A far-fetched theory, no doubt, but the Giza investigating team immediately informed KGB headquarters. We briefed the KGB on our findings. We were ordered to investigate possible target locations for pyramid transmissions. As the Giza work continued, the scientists at Project Labs in Moscow were preparing to create the most amazing portrait in history. In the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark, the Nazis were shown to be interested in archaeological findings in Egypt, which they hoped would yield untold powers. Sometimes truth, as they say, is stranger than fiction. Anthropologists speculate other cultures may have been motivated by the same impulse that produced the pyramids of Egypt. Ancient pyramids have been found in places as diverse as Mexico and China. Many experts conclude there must be an historical connection. It's an uncanny coincidence and it's an uncanny convergence that very much supports the notion that there was some sort of common antecedent civilization um, or that there was some common civilization that touched all these other civilizations um, that had either an unearthly or an incomprehensible origin. All of these legends and myths talk about beings who are men but not men, who lived long lives, who were giants, who went up in spaceships, who traveled among the stars, who brought us knowledge of language, alphabets, calendars. Legend says the pyramids of China were built when the first emperors ruled. The emperors were called the Sons of Heaven. Similar legends surround the pyramids of Mexico and the Yucatan. Strangely, the term Star Walkers can be found in both South American folklore and Egyptian text. The Egyptians used the phrase star walkers to describe, I guess what I'll call the giants, a, a class of a class of, of man slash god. They were men, but they weren't men. They were they were greater than men. Perhaps they were the, the giants or the titans who walked among the stars. You, you have this concept of star walkers. Men, but not men, godlike men, creatures like men, but who are really more like gods, who walked among the stars, who left Earth in spaceships. The Bible tells us about one of them. If you believe in the Bible, you almost have to believe in this notion. Uh, for me, I always, I always sort of pause and say, hmm, when, when different cultures tell me the same thing. The commonality of myth and pyramid building among diverse populations leads some experts to speculate that all cultures might be traced to a single parent civilization. This mysterious race may be responsible for the oldest known civilization on the American continent. The Incas of Peru nearly rivaled the engineering and construction abilities of the Egyptians. Similar to the Egyptians, the Incas had no knowledge of the wheel, yet thousands of miles of roads span their empire. 
How did the primitive Inca construct roads over the most hostile terrain on the planet? And why? Building the spiritual center of Machu Picchu would severely test today's engineers. How did the Incas move massive stones to such heights? Perhaps the Incas were aided by an unknown civilization that first appeared in Egypt. Some say this mysterious race left us time capsules of knowledge. Key to finding our ancient legacy is to unlock the secret of the pyramid. The scientific team at Giza believed they had discovered the secret of the pyramids. According to them, the pyramids were used for celestial navigation by alien space travelers. The KGB ordered the team to determine the target location. Planets, stars, constellations, and galaxies, all are in a constant state of motion. Project scientists had to replicate the night sky as it appeared over Giza thousands of years ago. We know a lot of things now that we can calculate where, at what time, let's say 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, 2,500 that it's supposed to be built. At 2,500 BC, mission scientists found no direct alignment between the pyramids and a planetary or stellar group. Through computer simulation, we were able to duplicate the celestial sphere as it appeared before human civilization. They moved back in time, searching for a link between the pyramids and an astronomical object. At 10,500 BC, something very strange occurred. Didn't match at 2,500, but it did at 10,000 BC. You understand? According to investigators, at 10,500 BC, the three pyramids at Giza are aligned with the stars in the constellation of Orion. The monuments of Giza were targeted on the constellation of Orion. This could not have been by chance. The builders of the pyramids must have been working from plans that were designed in 11th millennium BC, before the pyramids were constructed. A similar correlation was found when team members tested the artifacts. We started by conducting a radioactive sampling. Both the relics and the mummy were negative. Microscopic sampling of mineral composition, as well as magnetic neutron particle bombardment, indicates it is a mixture of metal and synthetic materials of unknown origin. More testing with carbon dating and radioactive sampling place dates beyond 10,000 BC. Excitement shot through the project headquarters. The date of the tomb matched the date at the Giza site. Project scientists concluded that there must be a connection between the design of the pyramids in 10,500 BC and the mummy found in the tomb. The KGB ordered further tests. Psychics conducted paranormal studies in the tomb. This quite risky experimentation really took place. But, uh, but uh, the levitation, yes, took place. When we deal with uh, such a paranormal uh, phenomenon, it's uh, quite natural 
First of all, the energy level of the whole area inside the tomb was absolutely beyond normal. A computer projection was produced of the mummy as it originally lay in the sarcophagus. From the date scientists claimed they could ascertain the physiology of the individual, reconstruction of the facial features commenced. Through the forensic reconstruction, uh, they were able to replicate the face of a humanoid found in the tomb. Characteristics include a large cranium, unusually large eyes, small chin, mouth, small, visible, tines of teeth, positive, long neck, estimated size of individual of two meters. As forensic work continued, Investigators at Giza probed the unity between the pyramids and the constellation of Orion. The scientists placed a celestial map over the plateau. Centered over the pyramids were the three stars that make the belt of Orion. Next, they traced the path of stars and took tangents from the Sphinx and pyramids. It was like a treasure map. The pyramids, the paths of the stars, they all intersected, and X marked a star in the constellation of Orion, a star very much like our sun. At Project Labs in Moscow, the facial reconstruction neared completion. I know this sounds unbelievable. I wouldn't believe it myself if I hadn't been there. But the reconstruction, the mummy, it didn't appear to be human. Maybe the legend is true. Maybe we found an extraterrestrial in that tomb. If something not from this earth had been recovered here in Egypt, it would have been brought to a classified military base back in Russia where super-secret operations have been conducted since before the Second World War. As you know from our previous investigations, even the KGB can't keep secrets forever. It could be sexual blackmail operations. Assassinations. UFO recovery missions. All have been prone to leaks. Project ISIS was no different. An ironclad web of secrecy surrounded the labs and offices of Project ISIS. But many of those working on the project were professors, scholars, and scientists, people in the habit of discussing their work. Top secret documents began to circulate. Rumors spread. Some word of the alien and the tomb leaked out. A group of uh, people began to meet former KGB staffers and uh, other, you know, mostly computer and technical people. They believed uh, that the tomb was uh, that of an alien who was once worshipped uh, as the god Orisis. The being brought to earth the knowledge of uh, science and math. He was uh, responsible for the growth of civilization. So oh, all these people call themselves the followers. The cult took their name from an obscure passage in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. According to Egyptian belief, a family of gods came from the stars bringing to the people of the Nile the wisdom of the universe. One day, the gods returned to their celestial home, except Osiris. The god gathered a group of mortals together and taught them much wisdom, including the magic of numbers. They called themselves the followers. It was their duty to protect and preserve the sacred knowledge until Osiris returned to teach the pathway to immortality.
the Egyptians were extraordinary astronomers. The reason is they believed, and let's not even say believed, they fully understood in every fiber of their beams that the stars were the map to the great god Osiris, to the afterlife. I believe it's a fundamental aspect of human nature that we, the idea of immortality, that we must go on, that we're not here for our five minutes and then dead, finished, end of story, put the book on the shelf. No, the human being needs to have some grasp of faith, some aspect of belief that the soul, the spirit, the essence of the individual continues on. This is why we have Christianity. This is why we have uh, Islam. This is why we have Judaism. It's the exact same with the ancient Egyptians. They had to have, they believed, they knew that their souls were immortal. The Kremlin allegedly ordered the KGB to refocus its efforts on the initial goal of the project. With the use of ground-penetrating radar, the passageway and tomb were imaged. Nothing seemed unusual. They lowered the radar scan. Still nothing. The radar screen showed only rock strata. They were about to abort the mission when the radar began to pick up an anomaly, a faint shadow. It appeared like a passageway. Directly below the tomb was a large spherical chamber. Many in Project Isis believed uh, they had found the legendary chamber of knowledge. Apparently, the extraterrestrial discovered was uh, buried with a vast library of knowledge and uh, data from the advanced alien culture, which uh, could have immense military relevance. Many wanted the chamber opened. Their argument was based on the following facts. The mission from Orion landed at exact ideal location to build pyramids that would serve as an navigational beacons for further reconnaissance of our planet. The first recorded UFO sightings were reported by the high priest of Pharaoh Tutmos III about uh, 3,400 years ago. UFO sightings continued through the ages, but escalated when man obtained the mastery of the skies. When the nuclear age began and man conquered the inner working of the atom, the aliens from Orion stepped up their observation of the Earth, resulting in the Roswell incident and uh, an explosion of uh, UFO contacts. Production reports began to sweep the world in the early 60s. A pattern emerged. Nearly all abductees spoke of physical examination. Women spoke of the insertion of objects, something resembling artificial insemination. Many believed they were again abducted, giving birth to alien hybrids. In the last decade, reports from credible people claiming to have been abducted has risen dramatically. Many elements of their abduction experience are similar. The same physical marks are left on abductees' bodies. Many recall similar details of alien spaceships. 
some experts say the similarity in accounts is circumstantial evidence that alien abductions are real. Could the abduction phenomena be a genetic colonization program begun in ancient times? Could aliens be cloning themselves by inserting alien genes into human DNA? Well, the Egyptians believed that DNA came from the heavens and, would, and, and, and that it would someday return. They could very easily be talking about the Anunnaki who came to Earth with their knowledge of DNA and with their DNA itself. In other words, the DNA, some of the DNA that humans are based on, actually did come from the stars. In their quest for a secret chamber of knowledge, did the KGB discover the horrifying truth behind alien abductions? Are humans being transformed into an alien species through genetic engineering? The nagging question is, with so many people involved in the recovery operation, what happened to these individuals? And if they can't be found today, why not? According to Ivanovich, the discovery of the spherical-shaped cavity bitterly divided Project Isis. Believing they had found the mythical chamber of knowledge, many argued for immediate excavation. But others voiced concern. They warned that the tomb could be a type of alien Trojan horse. Opening the chamber without more study could endanger the world. Uncertain what to do, the KGB did nothing. They uh, sealed off the tomb, wiped all the traces of its location from the files. In 1981, Project ISIS was officially closed. But many of those associated with the project were never the same. There were reports of personality changes, shifts in religious beliefs, disappearances, even suicides. Soon, a pattern emerged. He was a physicist. He is working with the Russian government. They began a group. I wouldn't say it was a cult. Maybe it was. I don't know. One night, I came back from school, and the whole mess was place was a mess, and the papers on the floor, and. They would just discuss the upcoming visit of, I guess, some extraterrestrials or some beings to Earth, and they would just prepare themselves for this kind of visit. And it was kind of scary because, I, I mean, when I was a kid, I would believe in things like this. The night before this happened, he was talking to my mother, and I overheard that he was saying, Egypt, something out of this world, something not from Earth, and, you know, and... Uh, and then he said KGB, and that's about it. It was scary for me to um, realize that my family belongs to some kind of cult or things like this, and God knows what they believe in. It was very strange, and I was thinking that maybe my family is... I was wondering if they were okay. When I walked into the room, you know, father was laying on the floor with a gunshot. I just know that they called themselves the followers, when the producers began researching this program, the story of the cult seemed like a dead end. Composed mostly of computer programmers, scientists, and technicians, the KGB took little interest in the group. Then the producers came across this news article. For reasons unclear, the story of a bus full of Russian tourists who disappeared in Egypt in 1985 drew little attention. But during the final phase of production, one of our field producers stumbled on the scoop of a lifetime. It occurred during the hidden camera exchange with the former here. diplomatic courier. Stop. That's terrible. It's scary. That's a banker. It's a headquarter of KGB. You've been in there? Yeah. <laughs> You're ready to pain in your pants. That's hey. terrible. Hey, by the way, when you came out of uh, any of your last trips out of Egypt, did you ever come across a, a video, videotape, Egyptian? Huh. You're lucky. I have some tape. So, some pornography, but... All with this tape. You can have it. Egyptian police gave it to me. As my gift. Thanks. Good business.
The footage appeared as if it were just a home video of someone's vacation. But to the producers, it raised troubling questions. What would a group of tourists be doing at a remote location in Egypt at night? What were they looking for? Then, night seemed to turn into day. Could this be the first video recording of an alien abduction? Perhaps a mass abduction? Could it be connected with the discovery of the tomb? If so, could these tourists be members of the cult? In his book, Ivanovich claims the followers believed the opening of the tomb signaled the aliens in Orion. They estimated the time electromagnetic energy would take to reach the constellation. The cult concluded the aliens could return no earlier than April 23, 1985. According to Ivanovich, the group went to Egypt to praise the return of the alien known to ancient Egyptians as Osiris. They believed it was Osiris who was buried in the tomb of the visitor. It was he who brought the fundamentals of science to mankind which begat civilization. The followers believed the second coming of Osiris would herald the beginning of a new age for mankind. Supporting the author's contention was the testimony from the daughter of a couple who joined the cult. I think that there is nothing special in this. Please keep on rolling. Right. Yeah. So, who will it be? Who will it be? Who will it be? I wanted to see, like, back off a little bit. I want to see that side. Let's go. I don't see anything. Nothing is going to be there. They go somewhere. What is this? What is this? What is this? I don't know. It's not Egypt. It's another country. It's another country. What is this? 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 Прибыла, судя по всему, на место встречи. Папа! Мамочка, господи, мама моя! Ой, мой кот! What did you see there? Did you see your parents? Yeah. I saw my mom and I saw my daddy there. Точно это был папа. Это я точно знаю. said that to understand Egypt, one must find the strand of truth among the threads of myth, magic, and mysticism. All intertwined in the dusty tapestry of time. Perhaps it is the same with the story of Project Isis. Untangle the theory and speculation left with the strand of truth. To 
summarize my research. This is what I have concluded. Approximately 15,000 years ago, aliens from a planetary system around a star in the constellation of Orion came to Earth. Why? Various possibilities. They could have been explorers, like we explore the Moon and our own planet, or perhaps on an uh, extraterrestrial Peace Corps mission to a primitive society, or maybe they were intent on uh, colonization. While Dr. Ivanovich's book has received cold silence from Russian officials, it has sparked passionate debate among the scientific community. Of course, I am familiar with Project ISIS by Dr. Ivanovich, and I've read it, and I can easily dismiss the vast majority of the book as the workings of an overactive imagination. After establishing an outpost, they began a propaganda campaign targeted uh, at the indigenous population that was uh, disguised as a religion. The massive building projects that aliens planned required a large, obedient labor pool. Um, there's a, a theory that causes all indigenous people anger, <laughs> and that is that some Martian, be he Osiris or whomever, came down from the heavens and gave us technology. Because what that says is that my people, the Egyptians, the Native Americans, the Druids or Celts, or whomever the individual might be, that these people did not create their own society. They selected or created a certain class of society, probably they selected during a couple of generations, and then they uh, brought this knowledge in the form of religion. That these individuals were indeed given this by someone else. That is not only wrong and misleading, it's terribly insulting. So, um, the objective of this uh, particular mission was to find the knowledge, knowledge which was left behind from an advanced culture, which predated this traditional Egyptian history. The tomb of the lizard. No one's ever gone to look for this tomb, because to do so would be like looking for the home of the Easter Bunny. Gods are not for burial, but for worship. A group of uh, people began to meet former KGB staffers and uh, other, you know, mostly computer and technical people. All these people call themselves the followers. But there is one chapter that I find intriguing. Chapter number seven. It is about a Russian cult called the Followers. And these individuals were all from advanced technological backgrounds, computer technicians, um, phone creation people, just extraordinarily brilliant people who dealt with radio waves. And they believed that the great god Osiris was sort of a god of technology, if you will, and that he did come and he did give this incredible wealth of knowledge to the ancient Egyptian people and that he would indeed return to Egypt. was a little bit scary to go deep about things like this. My mom and dad, they would just gather in the kitchen and talk maybe English or some different language so I wouldn't understand what they're talking about, you know. We do know as their landing site was picked at the desolate location in the center of our planet, Egypt. Um, I had recurring dreams about my family, about some light coming into them, being abducted to the spaceship, something like this. I've been seeing dreams like this, and I don't know if it was 
hallucinations or something like this. So what you have is an incredible amount of brilliant individuals, brilliant minds, traveling now to Moscow, from Moscow, to look for this tomb of the visitor, for the great the return of the great god Osiris. In the physical world, in the physical reality, uh, they're not with me, they're not here, they're lost, I believe. In the sense, inside of me, some kind of sixth sense or something like this, whatever you call it, somehow they're with me all the time. I don't know, I feel that they're somewhere around me, that I feel that their presence all the time. So, if they're abducted and they're elsewhere, obviously they're alive, they're somewhere here. If I don't have a feeling that they're dead. With all that we have unearthed here, the big question seems to be, what is the significance of what are clearly some very profound discoveries? And will we ever know the full story? We hope you've gained some insights into what promises to be a continuing source of intrigue and controversy. Thanks for joining us. I'm Roger Moore. Yeah.